So we start a new chapter and we'll be starting chapter six, which is about train control systems and with train, co train control and signaling systems. We'll be talking about what is a signaling block, what type of signaling systems, and what is the function of the signaling system, which is the control to control trains and to prevent them from colliding with each other. The signaling system is a very important system for running uh, a safe railway. So without further ado, let's start. But before that, there will be many new concepts that you are not familiar with. And it will be the first time that you will be seeing these concepts because most probably they are not being taught in any engineering discipline. Uh, so please bear with me and try to uh, give me your attention so we can go through this chapter with a great understanding. So let's start. This is the beginning of the chapter, Railway Rail Control Systems. And of course, the, in this chapter, I'll be to, uh, doing an introduction to the railway signaling. Then I'll be talking about timetable and time graph development. Then I'll talk about different signaling systems types. I will talk about ETCS and advanced signaling systems. And this is part of the European Railway Traffic, uh, the Euro uh, ARTMS, European Railway Traffic Management System. Then I'll talk a little bit about axle counters and track circuits. Finally, with communication-based train control, CBTC, and I will end with electromagnetic compatibility. I hope this, uh, this uh, chapter will give you a proper introduction to the world of railway signaling. So, of course, this is the legend Firas Nasser, also known as leader Firas Nasser. And uh, why I'm saying that I have a BSc in civil engineering, MBC in railway systems, engineering, many innovations in railways and outside railways, many of them did not see the light, but I'm doing this course after 10 years of leaving the MSc, hopefully to build the next generation of railway engineers. This is some pictures and here we go. Introduction to railway signaling. And th this is the first section. And in this section, we'll talk about railway signaling as a system. We'll talk about signaling block and then signaling systems and operations enhances, enhancement systems. So the railway infrastructure as a system or the railway train control as a system, this should be train control. This is control. It has the following function. It has the function of control. So railway signaling and train control specification enter to enter to that function along with the current telecommunication infrastructure, the railway infrastructure, the operation specifications, and we, you should have natural resources, staff and management capabilities, supplier capabilities, and availability of funding to end up with a proper railway traffic and timetable. And the uh, railway traffic, this is what, uh, what people generate. And the timetable is what people use. They look at the next train would be at 8 o'clock, and they take that train. So this is, uh, so just to, illust uh, to iterate on this, or uh, to, uh, just to extend a little bit, so this is a, a way for looking at the signaling and train control system as a system that has to interact with the rolling stock system, with the infrastructure system, with the, uh, with the operations, with the timetable, with the strategy. So how does these systems interact with each other is what you should be focusing on. And this is the theoretical framework you should be having within your mind. But the main function of the traffic control system is to uh, is control to control trains and to make sure that they do not collide with each other and they run uh, on table uh, they run the timetable on time. Uh, now I will be talking about the signaling block. What is a signaling block? And sometimes you say, "What's a signal?" Well, the easiest way to understand what's a signal is the same thing as a traffic signal. The difference between a traffic signal and a, a, a railway signal, the railway signal is uh, connected to a signaling block. And the signaling block is the area that is reserved for that signal. And the, the, uh, to prevent trains from colliding with each other, you would have group of signaling block to, uh, before any trains can reach the other. So the signaling block is an area that is controlled by a signal. And this signal gives the driver an instruction 
to where is the location of the next train. So here, the signal is green. The driver does not know where is the train, but he knows that he can pass. When he pass here, he see a double yellow signal. He knows that the next train is two signaling blocks away. So when he knows that he, the next train is two signaling blocks away, he starts decelerating his speed to make sure that he would not be able to catch with the other train. So this is the signaling block. It's an area that is controlled by a signal and inform the driver of the next train signaling of, uh, signal, uh, of the next train position. There are different types of signal. What you see here is a four aspects and there is three aspects like the traffic one where you see green, yellow, and red. Here you would have green, double yellow, yellow, and red. So what is, you should also know about the concept of headway. And headway is the distance between, is the time between, the distance or the time between the first train and the second train. And there is a minimum headway. And in this case, the minimum headway between this train and the other train is three signaling blocks. And here you would have this train, then he should be start decelerating or stopping the train or breaking the train. So the minimum distance, the minimum headway is the minimum uh, distance between two trains. And this is highly dependent on the signaling block. So what are the common types of signaling? Here you can see a three aspect signaling. Here green, yellow, and red. So if the driver here comes here and see yellow, he starts immediately decelerating his speed. There is an old mechanical system, but it's not used anymore. There is a communication-based term control system, and this is used in Metro. And basically here, it's not dependent on the driver. Actually, the driver is not, uh, is uh, the infrastructure inform the train about the next train. And if he, if there is a chance that this train catch with the other one, they, they, they would be automatically breaking the train. It's based on a system called ATO, Automatic Train Operation, which based on infrastructure communication, makes uh, inform this train, uh, or inform this train about the location of the other train. It's based on the concept of automatic train operation, automatic train control, and sometimes, uh, sorry, automatic train uh, control and ATC, automatic train control, and then there is automatic train operation. And sometimes you would reach, uh, ATC is automatic train control, ATB is automatic train protection, and ATO is automatic train operation. And this is the result of the, the two. So if you have automatic train control and automatic train uh, uh, protection, you might have an automatic train operation and you might not need even a driver. The other aspect is, the other signaling system is ERTMS, the European Railway Traffic Management System. And this is uh, three levels, ETCS level one, ETCS level two, ETCS level uh, three. In level one, you would, the, the train would be communicating with the infrastructure through balises, very much similar to the ATO, but also the, he would, uh, the driver would be seeing signals, can be visual signals uh, on the infrastructure or they can be in-cap signaling. He can see them from uh, the cap in itself. But the balises inform the train about the location of the next train. And in ETCS level two, there will be no physical infrastructure and the Belize's will inform the train about the next train. In ETCS level three, there will be a very small minimum headway because it will be a moving block as it will not be dependent on Belize's as much dependent on the telecommunication, uh, GSMR on the telecommunication network between the trains and each other. So the train will be uh, communicating with the mast uh, through GSMR and the GSMR uh, would tell the, this train where is the next train. So to just follow through on automatic train operation, here you can see a metro, a metro train and that's another metro train. This metro train, uh, it, ha it is, has to go through three uh, ATO spots, ATO1, ATO2, ATO3, uh, and if this train is in a red area and passes an ATB, automatic train pro uh, protection, and he will be automatically stopped. 
So, because this means that your distance from the next train is uh, uh, not acceptable or, 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 or is higher than the minimum headway. So the ATO spots will inform this train about the location of the next train. But with the ATB, they will make sure they will stop this train before catching the other train, even if the driver does not want that. So this is ATB plus ATO leads to automatic, tra uh, automatic train operation. And a ATS can be automatic train uh, stop or uh, automatic train, uh, ATS can be, can be automatic train stop, I think, but this can be a fully automated operation. So you would have a driverless metro system based on ATO and ATB. And many metros around the world these days are driverless because of this technology, because the infrastructure can communicate with the train and tell him what is the location of the next train. And if he does not know, if he, and even it can stop the train. So ATB and ATO. So automatic train operation is the automatic train op is the operational safety enhancement device used to help automate the operations of trains. The ATBS automatic train protection system is the automatic train protection refers to either the two implementations of the train protection system installed in some trains in order to help prevent the collisions through the driver failure to observe the signal or speed restriction. And to explain this, this is not necessarily related to metros, the ATBS. Here you can see the driver might pass a red signal and here there is an ATBS system or maybe a balise. And if he passes through the red signal, it will be automatically stopped. So this system will communicate with the train and tell him to stop the train because he passed a red signal. So this, now we have reached section number two where we'll be talking about timetable development. And we'll discuss this in details in the next section. So we have studied different types of signaling systems. We have this, uh, discussed a signaling block. Now we know what's a communication-based train control, what's an ATO, what's an uh, ATB, what's an uh, ATBS, automatic train protection system, and where it's used. We know what's an ERTMS, what European Railway Traffic Management System, what's an ETCS level one, what's an ETCS level two, and what's an ETCS level three. With that, we have got an introduction to the world of railway signaling. Let us see how we can do the headway calculations in the next section. Have a great evening and see you in the next, we'll see you in the next section.